Hello there. Uh, I have bought from eBay um, Logitech Z506 sound system. It was advertised as defective. Uh, here's the eBay listing and you can see it. And I thought I would try fixing it on my own and see if I can succeed. So I got out the speakers and the subwoofer. I have connected everything here and the problem was that there was no base. The subwoofer wasn't working at all. Now I have already fixed it and put everything together but then I thought I will show you how to do it yourself if you buy a defective one and want to fix it or if you buy uh, one without warranty and you want to fix it. Now I don't guarantee that um, the same problem that I have uh, would be in your case uh, anyways, I will show you what was wrong uh, with my subwoofer and then maybe it can help you diagnose the problem with yours if you have one. So first of all, uh, you have to remove 10 screws which hold the back plate to the case and also you have to remove 4 screws from the subwoofer. It holds uh, it to the wooden case as well. Now that I have removed all the screws, I can proceed to take it apart. So, what you do is take this out. There are two wires attached, just leave them alone for now. Inside you can see um, this white piece holding the wire. Uh, and then also up, you can see also a few white pieces holding wires. You have to undo them. Uh, just put your hand in there and uh, undo it and the wire comes out and do the same with the upper ones uh, by the way there you can see the power supply you sure first have to unplug of course the power before you disassemble this unit Here you can see the main board we will take it out shortly now, after you have undone all the white uh, clips holding the wires together, uh, you can start to take out the main board, but as you can notice, it doesn't come out easily. That is because, uh, let me try to show you, uh, like on the other side of this board, somewhere in the middle, uh, there's a um, sort of a double-sided sticky uh, tape holding it and it's very very um, hard to remove it so you have to uh, you have to lift it uh, from like in sort of a up and uh, upwards motion so as you can see there are still a uh, few sets of wires attached to the main board so I can't take it out completely so first of all I will have to unsol desolder uh, the subwoofer speaker uh, these two wires so uh, there's no socket for them on the main board so I will have to desolder them I will also remove uh, this wire because it's easy, you just reach in there with your hand and uh, and there it's removed. And also there's another wire, I recommend you remove it from the motherboard side, from this side, because it's uh, quite hard to get in there inside and remove uh, this wire from the power supply. So proceed to desoldering and removing all the wires. So I have finally removed the main board from the case. You don't need the case, you can put it away and also you don't need the subwoofer speaker for now, you can put it away as well. This is the underside of the main board and you can see this um, piece of um, sort of double-sided sticky foam uh, attached to it so you will uh, reattach it later when you assemble the case back. Now, in order to check if the potentiometer is bad, uh, you have to check the resistance between these two lower pins. 
between the center one and uh, the left one so now I'm checking the resistance it's about 15 kilo ohms uh, it should have the resistance of between 0 and 50 kilo ohms and when you change the uh, bass setting for example uh, I will put on the lowest setting then it should be 50 kilo ohms and when I put it on the highest setting now it's uh, about 0 ohms so depending on your settings it should be between 0 and 50 kilo ohms if it tests open circuit uh, then you have the issue that I had which is uh, the potentiometer is broken and you can fix it or replace it. Uh, I will show you how you can do that. Now what you have to do is um, take some more screws out. Now you have to take one, two, three, four, five screws out and then also you have to unscrew uh, these guys which hold the front, front right uh, speaker connector. Uh, you can do this not with a screwdriver, but uh, with uh, pliers. And you just uh, take it and screw it to the left, and then it unscrews. You do it for both. On the other side of these screws, you notice that they have this uh, plastic uh, cover, uh, and you have to take it out for this uh, if there is glue uh, in my case there was it was also glued so you have to take a knife or a flathead screwdriver and um, make uh, scrape it off just enough so you can take this plastic uh, cover off you also have to uh, you also have to undo unscrew this these three screws which hold the top cover in place as well so when you have finished unscrewing these uh, three bottom screws and all of the screws on this side of the panel this and also you have um, broken the glue on, on this part uh, the plastic cover should come off so there you go and there we have access now to all of the um, connectors one more thing you have to do is uh, just pull this uh, potentiometer knob off so I have removed the knob and now as you can see um, there is also this uh, nut holding uh, the potentiometer uh, screwed tightly to the panel so you have in order to remove this uh, panel and give, get full access to the potentiometer you have to remove this nut as well. Uh, for this you can use pliers and uh, just grip it tightly and unscrew it. So. There's also a washer, don't forget that and this whole panel comes off now as you can see um, there's a hole in the potentiometer and um, what you can do to fix it if it's not working um, you can get this type of uh, well, or any other kind of potentiometer cleaner. It's a special um, 
cleaner with a little bit of lubrication which is needed for the potentiometer and uh, you just uh, spray inside of this hole I have already done it so I'm not going to do it a uh, second time and then when you do this uh, just turn this knob uh, side to side like a couple dozen of times like for a minute or so then after you have done this test the potentiometer again so again you should measure uh, the resistance between this and this pin um, it should be between 0 and 50 kilo ohms and uh, if you can um, test them and also at the same time uh, turn the potentiometer you should see the value change between 0 and uh, 50 kilo ohms if this does not happen or if you get some random readings it's not a um, smooth change between 0 and 50 kilo ohms if you get some uh, ju it jumps around like when you wiggle it or uh, it jumps like from 0 to 50 then zero again or something like that then or if it doesn't help uh, the cleaning doesn't work and you still get open circuit between these pins then you may have to buy a new potentiometer and uh, replace it like unsolder this whole potentiometer and then replace the whole assembly if you are going to replace it uh, you also see that there is a um, wire attached to the metal um, protective casing of the potentiometer. You should then unsolder it and resolder to your new potentiometer because they will not come with this wire. Um, I guess it's used for um, signal, for shielding. Um, so that uh, random noise, ambient noise, doesn't get into the uh, signal that is being regulated by this potentiometer. Also another thing to notice if you uh, are going to replace the potentiometer so that the shaft is shaped in the same way because there are different shapes for the shaft. Uh, another thing to notice is the value of the potentiometer it is uh, B, B50K uh, B means it's a linear potentiometer so you have to look for uh, dual because it has uh, two taps two wafers um, 50 kilo ohms because it's 50k a potentiometer dual uh, 50k potentiometer with a shaft which is shaped like this. Uh, I think it's called a D shaft because uh, it reminds uh, of the letter D. So now when you have done the repair uh, you have to assemble everything back um, in the same way that we disassembled it. So the repair is now finished. You can proceed to connect all of the uh, speakers and try the base. I have put every wire uh, that is necessary back in place and now we can try and play some music and see if the base actually works. So there's some music playing, maybe you can hear it and let's try the base adjustment. So there's quite a noticeable change, everything works fine. Um, I hope you can fix your uh, Logitech Z506 system as well. And if this helped or if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.